Greetings, ladies and metagents, and welcome to this narration of the web series Human Stone Make Good Familiars. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Book 2, Chapter 43 Jake's Point of View With that revelation in mind, I pulled myself out of the memory and woke up, sliding out of the vine bed. I used magic to open the room back up and spotted one of the guards that was posted outside my room. Hey, I said to the guard. Can you get me something? What? The guard asked, sound confused. I want to try making a rune, and I need some materials. You have a rune maker's permit, the Niyama said from his perch. His head tilted slightly to the side. Uh, no. I didn't know I needed one. It is illegal to create runes without a permit. It is a dangerous profession, he explained. Although I do not expect a familiar to know this, let alone actually be able to make one. Even an Asha should know that. Break off, I said, rolling my eyes and closing my room in the smug-sounding jerk's face as hard as I could. Although really, I was just slightly louder than slurping and crackling sounds as the rock wall and vines reformed. Fine, I can probably make some stuff myself, I thought. Sitting on the floor, I summoned my backpack and started looking through it. Inside were a few gold coins, a spare dull jar, and a broken rune inscribed rock I got from boot camp that I keep forgetting about. Over 50 meters of rope and an emergency medical kit, but not one piece of paper. I guess that's too much to ask, I thought. Of course, even if I did have it, I wouldn't use it for the runes. I'd write my mum a letter, breaking myself out of those thoughts before I started to spiral again. I instead picked up the rock and looked it over. Inside the grooves where the runes had been was a sticky residue, probably the remnants of clay, or rather, it was the rune that was originally made using. Not enough, I murmured. For a second, I considered using the magic to melt the rock and turn it into clay, but since I didn't know what it was made of, or what clay was made of, atomically, I couldn't imagine it working. Rather than risk punching a hole in an atom, I put everything back into my backpack before sending it away and decided just to go ask the queen directly for both permission and materials. While I was staying in her castle, I was granted free roam to the place, so long as the guard was with me, and I was allowed to see her as needed, either by her request or mine. We'd met four times already since Suma left, and talked about various things. She wanted to know more about my world, and I wanted to know as much about hers as I could. Suma knew quite a bit about her country, but the queen definitely knew more. I opened the room again and walked towards the queen's court to ask for an audience with her. As I did, the guard spoke up again. Ah, back for some mo- wait. Where are you going? Get back here. You can't just- Stop, he shouted, getting annoyed and started fluttering behind me as I walked. I smirked. No, you follow. Where do you think you're going? To ask to see the queen. The arrogance. You have taken up too much of her majesty's time already. Instead of replying, I ignored him and continued walking. What are you doing? Are you not going to say anything? What would a predator like me have to say to you? I asked sarcastically. Predator? He asked, confused. That's what you called me, right? Asher? He laughed. Is that what your master told you that meant? Yes, but I'm sure you'll correct it. I had figured Suma and Selakar, the Niyama who put the runes on my weapons and armor, and told me what it meant originally, had given me a watered-down translation. It means the beast who eats you and enjoys every moment. The annoying guard said, and spite and cruelty dripping from his fat, snobbish beak. Did I do something to you? I asked. You killed Niyama and flew away without ever touching the ground, he said, sounding genuinely angry this time. At that point, I stopped walking and faced him in time to see him landing on a perch a few meters away. You killed all those court majors. That wasn't me. Oh, I heard the lies, but those weren't the first Niyama you killed, were they? He said. I stayed quiet, remembering what happened in the alley that day. Years ago, you killed the magistrate's son, tortured him to death. That's not what happened, I denied. You used death magic and the Grand Duke covered it up. Everyone just turned their feathers away because they think you'll be useful in the war. But I know what you really are. Shut up, I said angrily. You're a killer, a monster, a viking. I turned and walked away without another word. He didn't bother following. After fifteen minutes of walking around and trying to calm myself down, I made it to the Queen's Court. There was a Niema in the room, basically the castle's chief gardener, I guess, 
using magic to fix and rearrange the decorations on the pillar and walls. He came here every day to do it, so I had seen and spoken to him a few times. Hey, I said. Oh, greetings, Sentinel. He bowed and spread his wings. I told him a few times he didn't need to do that, but he insisted. How can I help you? Can I speak with the Queen about getting some materials for making a rune? I also probably need permission to make one since I don't have a permit. I shall inform Her Majesty's attendants immediately. I thanked him, and he flew through one of the holes in the roof. While he was gone, I started thinking about what the guards said, despite the fact that I was trying not to. My mind was wandering, so I didn't notice when two Niema, one of which was a gardener, and the other one was the Queen's personal attendants, fly up and land beside me, startling me when I suddenly heard flapping sounds from behind my back. Greetings, Sentinel. Queen Ampera sends her apologies, but she's unable to meet with you today. However, she was made aware of your requests, and has granted the use of materials and permission to craft a rune under the supervision of myself. The attendant, whose name was Sisko von Sopra, said, Okay, sounds good to me, I said, and nodded my head. Then I had another thought. Uh, also, uh, can I get a different guard? End of chapter. Book 2, Chapter 44, Jake's Point of View Back in my room, several Niema were finally delivering material so that I could try making a rune, under the supervision of one of the Queen's attendant, Talek Sopra, who was apparently a distant relative to the Grand Duke. The materials included a few scraps of leather to place the runes on, clay, dyes, some containers to mix things in, a dull jar for storing mana, and a special siphon for mixing the mana into the clay. This should be everything we need. Are you ready to begin, Sir Sentinel? Talek asked. I picked up the Dalja and started putting some manor into it. I'm ready. Within half a minute, the Dalja was full. I'd heard your manor capacity was quite large, but you filled that Dalja in mere moments, Talek said, impressed. Don't you see the royal mages all the time? I can't imagine that it's that impressive, I wondered. True, but they do possess large capacities as well. But even they take several minutes to fill a Dalja. I wonder, do you know your life force density? I used to, but I forgot. It was over 100 kema or something, I said, attaching a siphon to the filth delta. I haven't had it measured in a couple of years. Zuma might remember. I can ask her if you want. I would appreciate that, he said. I contacted Zuma over our private connection, and she remembered. She said that it was 500 kalma and around 60 dalma. Meant my manor reservoir was over 900, but she couldn't remember exactly. I was actually wondering, uh, c c could I remeasure it? If it has been several years, it may have increased due to your trading, Tadak asked. Sure, I guess. Can I wait until after this, though? Of course. Let us continue. Have you properly attached the siphon? I held up the dull jar with the siphon on top. He shook his head slightly. It's on backwards. Oh, I corrected the siphon and held it up again. Would you like me to put it on? He asked. I sighed and put it in front of him. Using magic, he turned the siphon, and I leaned in slightly to the side. I heard a clicking noise, and he gently sat the dull jaw back down. Have you ever made runes before? He asked hesitantly. No, but I've seen it done. A Niyama called Selakar showed me, and I also have memories of Zachariah doing it. All right, then please show me what you know. Tadek said, flapping his wings a few times and flying to a perch above where I was working. Um, well, uh, runes are effectively writing, I think. So I was just going to mix some dyes up and write. I stopped and realized the problem. Oh yeah, nothing to write with. You cannot simply write a rune onto leather. The ink will not stay in place. You must embed the inks and dyes into the hide, Talon said. Oh yeah, I thought. Writing on parchment and paper are super different. You have to basically tattoo the ink into place on leather. Here is a tool you can use, Talek said, and used magic to levitate a small scalpel thing to me. Thanks. Start by mixing mana from the dull jar into the ink and dyes. Okay, how do I do that? Place the materials of your choice into the siphon, then seal it. It will immediately begin the mana infusion, he said. I picked up a bowl of ink and poured some of it into the siphon, then closed the metal lid. Immediately, an ear-piercing super-high frequency sound started screaming from the siphon. Ah, freck! I yelled and covered my ears, but it didn't help much. What is wrong? Talek asked, surprised. You could have mentioned the noise, I yelled, trying to be louder than the siphon. 
What noise? he asked, confused. You can't hear that? I hear nothing. Suddenly, the siphon stopped and glowed a faint red. Ah, it is finished. Thank goodness, I said, opening the lid and pouring the ink into a bowl. Talek spent a few minutes explaining how to use the scalpel thing, and then I got started. The word I chose was coal. It seemed simple, and I didn't want to accidentally burn anything down. Once I was finished, Talek looked it over. This does not look like any rune I am no, he said, sounding worried, with his head tilting slightly. None of the symbols are even connected. I doubt it'll work. I don't think it will either, but I want to try, I said, and laid the leather strip I had been tattooing for the last hour and a half on the ground. What is the rune's intended function? It is to test to see if it works, but hopefully it'll become cold. Touching the letters, I tried to activate them, but nothing happened. Didn't think so, I muttered. You will need to connect the symbols, otherwise the mana cannot flow properly, Talek said, and I got back to work. Another ten minutes later, all the letters were connected, like cursive. How's that? I asked. Oh, that is an unusual pattern, but it should work. Once again, I touched the letters and tried to activate them. This time, it worked, sort of. Hot! I yelped and jerked my hand away. Thankfully, there was no visible burn on my hand. But I still cast a spell to make a water ball and stuck my fingers in it. Ah! I sighed. Looking back at the makeshift room, I saw that the only thing left of it was a smoldering strip of charred leather. Right! Forgot about that, I said, remembering the inversion thing. It's been so long since it happened, that slipped my mind. Your symbols were not precise enough. After an hour of preparing materials and tattooing another piece of leather, this time with more specific instructions, I was ready to try again. And will this rune become very hot from your cold as well? Talek asked, chuckling. Hopefully not. This one is more specific. It says, make this leather strip free solid, I told him, and placed it on the floor. Do you want to activate it for me? My manner is inversion, so it won't work right if I do it. You must test your own runes. Use the dull jar itself to activate the rune if you must, Talek said. Never mind the fact that I would rather not visit a healing mage today. I faked the laugh and summoned my backpack again. Then I got my spare dodge all out. Once it was filled up, I touched the tip of it to the rune and activated it. Thankfully, mana is stripped of its natural properties once it enters the dull jar. So it worked as expected. I touched the leather strip carefully and jerked my hand back suddenly when I felt something. It's cold, I exclaimed excitedly. Picking it up, I realized that it was as hard as a rock. It worked, I said, and tapped the frozen strip against the stone wall with several loud clinking sounds. An excellent second attempt, I must say. I have not seen such odd ruins, but they seem to work well. Congratulations. Thanks. I want to try a few more things, but this is cool, I said, unintentionally making a pun. When I get back to base, I think I'm going to do a few more experiments. You'll need a ruin maker's permit for that. Her Majesty only gave permission for you to learn while you were under supervision. Talek thought for a moment. However, you could start officially taking classes while on base. It would take some time, but many Niema receive rune makers' permits while serving in Her Majesty's royal army. I nodded my head. I'll think about it, but I'm done for now. Besides, I need to go home soon anyway. Suma has been waiting for hours. I see. Do you still have time for me to test your life force density? Talek asked. Yeah, sure. And I want to say goodbye to the Queen and Pera as well. All right, then. Please follow me, Talek said. With that, we left the room. End of chapter. Book 2, Chapter 45 Queen and Pera's Point of View My kingdom, my people, my family are all under threat. War with the Southern Union has killed countless of our soldiers, risked our solidarity, lost our territory, ravaged our farmlands, and put centuries-old treaties under scrutiny. The only thing that kept my kingdom together for a time was my father, the previous king, and when he died, I feared that I would lose everything. Until he came, the familiar of a middle-class mage, Jake the Sentinel. In less than a month, he took down one of my father's biggest obstacles and ended their noble house's influence. With the backing of Grand Duke Sopra, the way for me to take the throne for my family members was opened. At first, I surmised that it was a mere coincidence and that I should simply be grateful for the opportunity. So I granted him a pardon for any crimes he had committed while doing it, 
and left it be. I never expected him to join the military, or the wyverns, or to be a viking. The familiar who had given me the opportunity to save my kingdom from my foolish family was now the most dangerous thing that I had ever seen. I orchestrated an inquiry with my royal court and his master, also that I might see him for myself. I later regretted that decision when one of my brother's supporters bribed members of the court to kill the familiar, but their foolish mistake allowed for greater insight into the threat, and for one more opportunity. Your Majesty, I have performed the measurements as you requested. My attendant Tarek said as he flew into the room and landed on a golden perch beside my roost. He sounded distressed. The results, I asked. We were currently in my private chambers, which had a special runes engraved into the walls to prevent anyone from hearing what was discussed. It is as you feared his abilities have increased from our last report, given by researcher Selakar. By how much, Sentinel's new life force density is 600 Kalma and 93 Dalma. His mana reservoir has also increased to 1,007. In less than three years, he has achieved the same growth as most Niyama strive their whole lives for, I said, and took a deep, calming breath. Your Majesty, did you get a good look at him? Talek asked. He was talking about mana gaze, an ability only some members of the royal family and the highest class of mages can use. It is an ability gifted to us by the dragons that allows one to physically see the mana one possesses. I did. During the interview with the royal court, the image was um, disturbing. In what way? Surrounding him was a purple and blue miasma. It poured off his body like a waterfall. To me, it looked as if he were in a living mass of manor. Do the records of the Vikings rampage match what you saw? Yes. According to the records, Jake has roughly the same amount of manor as Hal. Was, uh, was it wise to spare him? If he's such a threat, Talek asked, shaken. For now. But if the rumors from the front lines and the reports of Dage's potential awakening are true, we will need him. There was a moment of silence as we both thought, then I broke it. How did the experiments with runes go? Very well, Your Majesty. He learned the basics and even developed new rune symbols and a new method of weaving them. Tadic sounded excited. He was always loved rune smithing and rune craft. It was the Viking who originally created them, so I should not be surprised. That is the end of my report, Your Majesty, Tadic said and bowed. Then you are dismissed. Have a good night, Tadic. He bid me a good night and flew out. Glancing over to a small silver statue of my father, which I created after his passing and kept in my chambers, I wondered what he would do in my position. Would he worry more about the rumors from the front lines of the war, the dragons return, or the Vikings in our midst? A monster, a Viking, a war, and a chaos dragon, I said to myself aloud, but did not finish the thought. End of chapter. Book 2, Chapter 46, Jake's Point of View. After letting Talek measure me, I visited the Queen one last time and said goodbye. Thank you for your hospitality, Queen Ampera, I said, bowing down to her in her throne room. I hope that you have found the answers you needed for my family's archives during your stay. Yes, ma'am, well, most of it, but I think I got everything there was to find. If you ever wish to return, please do. Thank you, Your Majesty. Well then, I guess it's time for me to go, I said, and started standing up. I had told Sima what I was doing before the meeting, so that she would be ready to summon me. All I needed to do was call her. Hold one moment, Sentinel, the Queen said. I want you to understand something. Yes, whether it is fair or right, I do not know. But you have become the most important person in this kingdom in a matter of days. Possibly the whole world, she said. I don't know if that's a... I tried to say, but you cut me off. It is, I assure you. And for your own protection, I suggest you keep our arrangement, our meetings, and this matter with danger to yourself. I already informed Lady Suma before her departure, and now I am telling you, for your own sake, tell no one of what has happened during your visit here. At least, nothing regarding the dragon, Queen Ampera said seriously. Thinking for a moment, I agreed. I understand. Suma and I won't say a word. She nodded and dismissed me. With that, I called Suma, and she summoned me back to our base. As the darkness of the summoning spell overtook me, I held my breath, and my heart pounded like a drum. For what felt like minutes, I hung in the void, expecting to see him again. But he never showed up. 
reappearing back at the base. I let out a sigh of relief. Welcome home, Sua said. It's weird. Those two simple words really hurt. I looked around and realized that I was in the room that had been assigned to me a few weeks ago. It was smaller than I remember. Thanks, I said sadly. I guess this is home for now, I thought to myself. Did anything happen while I was away? No, but we do have our first patrol duty tomorrow and our first infield exercises, Suma said. You should get some rest before then. Nah, I said, looking around the cramped room, still littered with vines I had been neglecting to clean. I'd rather go say hi to everyone first. No, right then. Our team is in the pit gambling over sparring matches. Suma flew up and landed on my shoulder. While we walked, I told her about the rune experiment I ran. She seemed interested, but also confused. We were just arriving at the pit by the time I finished explaining, but I couldn't see the team. Where is everyone? I wondered. Up there, Suma said, motioning with a wing towards the poachers near the top of the dome around the pit. Also, I was told by the queen to keep what happened a secret, so they did not know that we were attacked by the court. I told them that our mission went as planned, but that we were attacked by marauders on the way. Queen Ompera talked to me too. Thanks for keeping me in the loop, though. At that moment, one of them flew down from the perches and landed in front of me. Jake, Rao said, as she flapped her wings excitedly. You're back. How are you feeling? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm fine, I said. One by one, the rest of the team flew down and said hi. They all asked how I was feeling. Apparently, Suma told them that I'd spent a few days recovering after the attack, and that's why I stayed in the city longer than Suma. We gathered around the pit and watched the matches. At the moment, one of the other squad's lieutenants was training with her team with the monk battles, a regular form of training for us in the last few weeks. Jake, uh, about the rune experimentation you mentioned, do you plan on continuing on base? Sima asked. Yeah, but I need to get permission and a professional teacher, or maybe babysit me, I said. You have an interest in runes, Odin said. I knew you had some of your garments and weapons, but I didn't know you enjoyed crafting them. I just started. It's new. Is that not rather expensive? How do you afford it? Nine asked. I used to sell paper, so I've got plenty of gold coins and spare dull jar. You sold paper? Odin asked, shock. Do you have any now? No. Sorry, uh, I used to carry some, but I don't anymore. My backpack weighed too much when it was full of paper. I wish I'd kept some, though. I said sadly. Those scraps of leather weren't enough, and writing a letter to my mum without paper would be really hard anyway. I heard that Captain Gigolas got a shipment of paper recently, Rao said. What, when? Well, you were gone, she answered. Do you know where he is right now? I asked urgently. If I have paper, probably his room, Nine suggested. Suma, would you mind going there and summoning me? I really need to talk with him, I said. Right now? I suppose I do not mind, Suma said. I thanked her, and she flew away. Are you going to ask for some paper? Lyne wondered. Yeah, I just need one piece. End of book. We'll pick the story up again when book three is mostly finished and released, and my schedule allows it. I hope you all enjoyed. Cheers. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Cam Maxwell, Gaspar Arnholtz, Bushmaster177, Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Drugzoon, WRE, and Blueberry Cat. Thank you very much for the support. It is super appreciated.